What is up, guys? Fair and unfair here. I'm fair. And I'm unfair, and today we're going to play with some artifacts. It's a real touching story of how this deck came together. Well, Tezzerite's touch made me re realize that uh, Scissors is a thing in Pioneer, and I was like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and build um, Scissorless Scissors. And so uh, this is where we started with, because uh, we just the new set literally just dropped today. And we wanted to go ahead and play with something new. So let's go ahead and get into this gameplay and enjoy. And don't run with scissors. All right, so as we said in the intro, we're going to be playing a lot of artifacts. So we've got Ornithopter, which is a premier spell, being able to have a zero mana flyer to put scissors onto. Uh, we've got Aether Spellbomb to be able to take out a lot of creatures or being able to be a draw effect. Uh, Witching Well, Maze Mind Tome, just good in general cards. Hope of Gear is kind of like another Ornithopter with little cool effects. Stone Coil Serpent is a scaling threat that also, when you put a Tezzeret's Touch onto, just gives it an extra plus five plus five, which is sweet. Uh, Metallic Rebuke is a really fantastic counter spell. Really glad it was added to the format. Being able to counter for one mana is amazing. Blood Chief's Thirst, premier removal spell, not really much to say about it. And then Emery and Psy are both just really good cards to have with artifacts. Contraband Kingpin is the one we're trying out. Uh, having a two drop one for lifelink is sweet, and then combine that with being able to filter through our cards is great as well. And then we've got, as we were talking about in the intro, uh, Tezzeret's Touch, as well as Skilled Animator to be able to turn our really small artifacts into bigger artifacts to beat people down. Our land base is pretty easy. Uh, we just got black and blue lands. Ether Hub being able to tap for either color for a one-shot effect works perfectly fine, considering the fact we're playing a lot of colorless cards. Uh, so yeah, basic main boards. For the sideboard, we've got Tormod's Crypt um, instead of Grafticker's Cage because we've ever Emery. Uh, we got Thoughtseize for taking stuff out of people's hand that we need to. Aether Gust and Mystical Dispute for different matchups. Uh, which is the vengeance for being able to take out hordes of goblins or elves or humans, I guess. And then Ashiok Nightmare's Muse is going to be a really fantastic additional threat for people that might want, for us, if we want to be able to defeat, like, uh, some good mid-range matches. But yeah, that's the whole deck. Let's go ahead and get into a game, and maybe we can run with scissors. All right, so we're on the draw. We've got Island Witching Well for a turn one play, which is always fantastic. And then either turn two Emery, or actually we can turn two Aether Spellbomb into Emery. So yeah, this is a great hand. Being able to crack the spell bomb uh, continuously to put things into their hand is always a great choice. Can we see touch? Yep. So what we're really looking for is like an ornithopter or something like that at this point. Second Tezzeret's touch it actually might be worth it. Uh, we're going to drop the island for sure though because we don't really need a third blue source. What do you think? Uh, it might be worth keeping because... I, I, I think you keep every one of those that comes your way. Yeah. Makes sense. And uh, if you guys haven't read uh, Tezzeret's Touch before, by the way, uh, the really cool thing about it is the fact that whenever an uh, enchanted artifact is put into a graveyard, it goes back to your hand. Not Tezzeret's Touch, but the thing that was in, um, enchanted. So you're able to get get it back. Like if they destroy your creature, like if it's a Aether Spellbomb, you can just get it back immediately. So you don't really lose out like you would with a lot of uh, other aura effects. We'll go ahead and jam Emery here. Uh, we're playing against Esper, so there's a very good chance this gets countered by, yeah. Oh, no. Okay, cool. Not a counter spell. Let's go. However, we are running into a pretty aggressively uh, slanted counter deck, but we did get Ornithopter and Hope of Giraper back here, so we probably are going to play the uh, Ornithopter and play the Tezzeret's Touch onto it next turn, if they do anything. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that now. It actually might be worth playing the Tezzeret's Touch onto uh, the Aether Spellbomb just so we can attack the Narset. I like that. Yeah, we do that. Nothing else in the deck game does if you does it. Nope, just the Aether Hub. So let's go ahead and play the Tezzeret's Touch on. We're gonna do the Spell Bomb specifically because uh, sacrificing the Witching Well draws you two instead of one, which is always a great effect. Well, you just attack for the Emery. You don't have anything to reanimate, right? Yeah, we're gonna put the Ornithopter onto the battlefield. Oh, okay, I missed that. And that way, if we draw a Black Source, we can put the Tezzeret's Touch onto the Ornithopter as well. The only way we kind of get messed up here is if they have a board wipe, which it seems like they do. But we're going to draw a card off the Shadow Sky, and we're going to get our Aether Spellbomb back, too. So we end up not in a terrible position. Uh, second Aether Hub is actually pretty great. Yeah, so you just go ahead and jam it on the uh, Witching Will of Attack, right? Um, so... While well, the shields are down, specifically. Or you can tap out for the Stone Cold Servant and do it next turn, and then still hold up Rebuke, maybe? I think that's the better choice, is to hold up Rebuke by playing this for three because that would allow us to hold up Rebuke to counter whatever, uh, they because they could go uh, five fairy here and that would just screw us. So playing this for three and then being able to turn it into an eight eight next turn would be fantastic. Because we can tap the Stone Cold Serpent and the Witching Well for the Metallic Rebuke. 
True. And since this is day one of the format, there's a very good chance they don't realize the Metallic Rebuke even exists. Okay. Really just play that? Yeah, we'll just let that resolve. We're not super worried about that. We just counter the Narset if they play it, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think so. It really depends on what happens here. But yeah, this deck is super versatile, being able to, um, being able to, like, use your Witching Wells to scry, sacrifice to draw cards, use your Tezzeret's Touch to re-buy uh, re them. Like, there's a lot of versatility in the deck. Interesting. So I think we just go ahead and jam the Tezzeret's Touch here. Uh, there's a very good chance they have a counter spell, which we can just counter so back. do you do that, or do you just attack with it as is? And then, like, you could play, like, a couple more artifacts to make your review like, also usable, then you have Tezzeret's Touch, like, you can also use it without tapping your Stone Girl that you're going to be attacking with. That's actually a valid point. We're not threatened. Like, I, I actually kind of like playing it next turn, because putting a, uh, making it do an 8-8 doesn't reduce the, uh, the turns to kill, because it would still be three turns to kill instead of two, but if we attack this turn as a 3-3, then this is a, this kills them in two turns. So I actually like that. Let's go ahead and play it right now. All right, go ahead and attack right now, I mean. And then we can probably just jam the Maze Mind Tome and the Spell Bomb and hold up Rebuke. You just put the second Stone Clones right there? Well, I kind of like playing the Maze Mind Tome, if nothing else, because of the fact that we can scry for um, another Black Source. Uh, but, or we can also scry for another um, Metallic Rebuke. But I'm actually not opposed to playing the Stone Cold Serpent either, though. Um, I kind of like playing the Stone Cold Serpent here, because if they if they tap out for a Wrath, you can rebuke it. I will say, though, if we specifically play... If they specifically have a counter spell for the uh, Serpent, then we can't counter it, because of the fact that we only yeah. have one artifact. Um, okay, so maybe, maybe just the Tome in this spell bomb. Yeah, and we still get to hold up Rebuke, even after scrying with Maze Mind Tome, because the, the Spell Mob and the Witching Well will be um, available to uh, be tapped for Improvise. And we'll go ahead and pass here. Uh, one thing to note, Improvise does not uh, count for the blue mana source, so you can't tap Witching Well for the blue source. Like you can with, um, what, what what's the ability? Court of Calling. Yeah, Court of Calling. Convoke, thank you. Yeah, so it doesn't work like Convoke does in the fact that you can uh, pay the colored mana as well. Yeah, we'll keep leave that on top. Keep it, 100%. So now we're going to go ahead and jam the Tezzeret's Touch here now. Um, I think you just put it on like... I think we put it on the Stone Coil Serpent here. So you have two artifacts still untapped from this. I think you put it on like the Spell Bomb of the Witching Well. You think so? Yeah, because that way you're diversifying threats and if they kill one of them, they don't kill both of them. And they're, they're still taking some amount of damage. But if we put the Tezzeret's Touch onto one of them, um, and then... Uh, actually, you're... You can still hold up for beauty. Yeah, because, but, yeah, you're right, because we, we're not activating the Maze Mind Tome yet. I think we put it onto the Ether Bomb again, though, just like we did last time. The only uh, big issue is the fact that we lose our Black Mana here. But uh, it, And if they have uh, a 3 mana counter spell, we're kind of screwed. Or that. We will 100% counter that. Yep, uh, and that will give us a, a decent threat. And they die next turn if they don't wrath. Yep, which they probably do have a wrath effect. Um, that's a very good chance. But once again, if they wrath, then we're going to get our Aether Spell Bomb right back. Oh. Okay, um, so we... So they can't do it next turn? You can just... I think we just attack. Yeah. Yeah, if they try to play it next turn, we just rebuke it. Um, yeah, we're gonna just... go ahead and jam the Ornithopter. There's no reason not to. Uh, you... Well, I think we go ahead and play the Stone Coil as well for three. Um, I actually think you hold it back. Uh, that's true. If they have if a they... board wipe, we... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And that way we can actually draw a card off of Maze Mind Tome instead. If they play another Approach the Second Sun, we just counter it and win. Let the Narset resolve. Yeah, we're not worried about the Narset. They have to have exactly a way to deal with one of our threats, or a way to win. And you just counter this? Yep, and we win. Ooh. Oh, I didn't know auto-pay uh, taps your, your artifacts. That's pretty dope, actually. Alright, game two, we trimmed a oh, couple of spells, and we decided to add some Mystical Disputes, uh, Thought Seizes, and an Ashiok. And we win! Wow, they just knew what we were citing in, so they just conceded. They're like, oh, they have a Planeswalker and a Counterspell in their hand? Can't beat it. Literally. Can't beat it. Yeah, they, they were uh, stream sniping, even though we're not streaming right now. But we do stream every single Monday and Friday. Monday and Modern Fridays, uh, we play in Stewart primarily. And you can come visit us in the link below if you want to come and hang out. We do uh, a lot of viewer requests, at least when it comes to Arena. And 
if you want to hang out with us in Discord as well to chat with us, feel free. The link is down below. And if you would, please hit that subscribe button. Maybe 30% of our viewers are actually subscribed. So if you would, just go ahead and hit that button right there. That'll help us out a lot. And you'll be able to make sure you get to see our videos every single week. I'll send you cat pictures. <laughs> <laughs>